This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and COO of Abacus Mining and Exploration, Mr. Paul Anderson. Paul, how are you this morning? I'm just very well, thank you. Gerardo, how are you? I am well, thank you for asking. You and I spoke a little under a month ago, and the last time we spoke, Paul, we chatted about the progress at Ajax, which looks like it now has gained some traction. Um, that's moving forward. That's a positive, but that that that's really a long-term play, right? We know the the quality and the merit of the project. We know the attention it's received in the past. We always know that it. We we also know that it was permit challenged, um, and that it appears there may be a path forward there. Um, we talked a bit about. Willow, when you mentioned, you hinted that you were still looking for a quality gold project in a good jurisdiction. It appears you got one of those. Can we talk about Jersey Valley? Yes, absolutely. So um, we made an announcement recently that we picked up the uh, Jersey Valley uh, project. So it's in the Nevada, um, the Battle Mountain area of Nevada. Um, the reason we've done this is we've, uh, you know, we've, we have quite a bit of experience um within the company in gold um pat you know past uh experience uh, mike mcginnis our uh, executive chair used to run gateway uh which had uh gold properties in nevada uh, mike and i jointly ran uh, riverstone which had properties in west africa and burkina faso and we uh we actually discovered about a three and a half million ounce deposit there which got sold on to uh, true gold and then taken over by endeavor it's, it's in production now so we've you know, we know the gold space. We've we've been looking for a while uh, for a new property, and we've been looking mostly in Nevada. We just like uh, the the potential of Nevada overall. So Jersey Valley is uh, basically uh, in very close to a couple of very large mines. Uh, one is known as uh, Phoenix Fortitude, which has past production of around 14 million ounces gold. Um, they've recently put in an application to extend the mine life out to 2063. So you know, it's a large, low-grade deposit, typical of a lot of the uh, Nevada stuff, but it's, um, it, you know, it's a large deposit by anybody's uh, estimation. Um, we're also very close to the Cove McCoy uh, deposits, which had basically about four, 4 million ounces of past uh, gold production. Hmm. And um, that particular deposit was used to be part of the Gateway, uh, the Gateway projects about 10 years ago. Gateway, by the way, got sold on to Victoria Gold in 2008. Um, so it's it's part of it's part of that group now. So we went looking for a good project, and we um, we looked at a, a whole bunch of things, and we we just settled on Jersey Valley. Um, one of the interesting things about Jersey Valley is that uh, it's basically in an area that um, that didn't have any claim state. So we en- we entered into a deal with a private uh, Nevada company to take the project on, and then we pretty much immediately expanded the size of the claim group. So that's what we did last um, last week. We announced that. Um, the, in terms of the geology, it's uh, it's kind of an interesting area. It's, it's, it's basin and range. So if you think of the uh, the basins as the valleys and the ranges as the hills. Right. So on the Jersey Valley property, um, the the range is marked by a series of intrusive rocks, and then the valley is just sort of flat, flat pediment covered. Um, you don't see very much in it. Um, the the contact between the intrusives and the pediments is um, is marked by a breccia zone where past uh, past uh, people on the property have worked the property have found some pretty good um, gold and silver values. I think they found up to about 5.8 grams per ton uh, gold and 114 grams per ton silver in chip sampling in that area. And there's one uh, drill hole in the area that intersected uh, about 0.6 grams gold over 40 feet, including two grams gold over two feet so that's encouraging it's um that's sort of one of the targets on the property the other target is out in the pediment in that flat covered area so there's no outcrop ex- out there except for this center zone got it so the center zone is basically if you think of um something like old yellow old uh, old faithful in yellowstone uh, park right uh, this is uh the surface expression of a of a hydrothermal system so it's sort of sitting out there by its lonesome. Um, past operators have done a bunch of drilling, some really wide space drilling in the area, and they've come up with some very interesting results. Um, a lot of it is not economic in terms of gold and silver values, um, but it, 
there's anomalous gold in all of those drill holes. And you see things like uh, arsenic and mercury and, um, you know, elements like that that are, are consistent with a geothermal source. So what we think that we're looking at is the, the center as the, the top of a, you know, some sort of a hydrothermal system. And down below is, uh, is the good stuff that we're going after. Um, the previous drilling in the area, I guess the best uh, result in, the, in that pediment area is 245 feet of 265 ppb gold and uh, over 3,000 ppb silver. So, you know, it's, it's not economic in gold. It, it might be in silver, but it's, those are pretty, pretty good results. And what we've noticed is that all of the drilling is done in that area was very shallow. It, it only went down to um, maximum 100 meters depth. Most of those drill holes ended in better mineralization, so the values were getting better towards the end of the hole. So we really think that we're sort of sitting on top of a system that has some potential at depth. It just hasn't been drilled very deeply. And uh, we just like the looks of it, you know, all, all, of, all the, uh, the things that we've looked at. The past operators have done quite a bit of geochemistry and geophysics, a little bit of wide space drilling, um, enough to get us interested and think that it's a pretty good target. So that's, that's sort of the synopsis on, on Jersey Valley. So let me ask you this, Paul, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here for my subscribers and readers and for myself, frankly. I'm a shareholder. As you know, I've written checks at 30 cents and 20 cents and 10 cents and 5 cents, right? And probably we'll be writing another one here at 5 cents. Is this property, I know how selective you and the executive chairman, Michael McInnes, are. Um, is this property one that you're looking to advance because of the merit or is it a project that you're bringing in? And again, I'm playing devil's advocate because we have a strong gold market and you just wanted a gold property in the portfolio. Well, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of both. I mean, we, we really like the project. We're going to advance it. Certainly. Um, we, we've been looking for some time for a gold project to put into the portfolio really before the gold market took off. We, um, you know, as you know, we're concentrated on copper with, with Ajax and the Willow project. Um, we wanted to sort of get something else in the in the portfolio. Gold and copper sort of go together. Our Ajax property is gold and copper. It, you know, in in the right gold market, it could be a gold deposit uh, or a gold project. Um, you know, we were looking for a good gold project. We've looked at a whole bunch of things. We're actually still looking at a number of other projects to maybe put into the portfolio yet. So there may be some new more news coming on that. Um, you know, and the. The nice thing is that the gold market has taken off. I mean, my feeling is that uh, gold is going to take a bit of a run for a few years. Um, it certainly looks like it. So it's a good place to be uh, to, you know, to have a at least one one gold project in the portfolio. So that's sort of the thinking along that lines. Excellent. You mentioned previous operators drilling to approximately 100 meters. So I'm assuming that the play is to obviously be able to properly test this. You're going to have to go deeper than that, right? We're going to have to go deeper than that. Yeah. Um, the you know the, the there's a mag target that underlies the uh, the center zone which is sort of the the area that looks the most interesting so it covers part of the intrusions and it co covers part of that pediment area that flat valley area um, within that target there's only uh, what half a dozen drill holes very very shallow most of them went sort of 50 meters depth um, they're very widely spaced so uh, our feeling is that target hasn't been uh, really properly tested. And to our mind, that um, that mag low represents uh, alteration. So you've got fluids running through the rocks. They're altering it. They're opening things up. They're bringing in um, gold and, and silver mineralization. So we really think that that's uh, pretty much an untested target. But it certainly will be low, below sort of 50 to 100 meters. Let's talk about the terms of the deal. I understand it. Well, the letter of intent was signed with a private company out of Nevada, and it provides a 15-year lease um, with actually no work commitments for the first three years. Is that accurate? No work commitments at, at any time. At no any work time. Commitments, no, no work commitments at any time. So the uh, the terms of the deal are we, you know, we it's basically a lease. We we pay the operator X number of dollars every year to to be able to work the property. And anytime within that 15 years, we can um, we can buy the property out completely. Uh, we give him a royalty. Uh, any of the money that we spend on the property, the lease payments um, are credited against that royalty as well. So we get, we get some of that back if the thing was to go into production. 
So um, the first three years, our commitments, our lease commitments are 85,000 US, which is pretty reasonable. Um, so, and with no work commitments, I mean, we, we don't have a lot of money that we need to spend on the property, although we're, we're certainly intending to get out there and, and hit it pretty hard soon. And, and with this 15 year lease, can that convert into uh, the option to own, you know, the, the, the majority or all of the project? I'm assuming that's the case. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a buyout. Um, you know, we, we don't earn anything unless we buy the, th- the property out. So with any time within that 15 years, we can, we can exercise the buyout. Then we own it 100%. Um, the other thing I, I forgot to mention on the property, which is kind of interesting, that the property is great access. It's less than an hour drive out of Battle Mountain. So Battle Mountain is a small town in Nevada. Um, you know, a mining town, lots of, lots of services, lots of hotels and restaurants and that sort of thing. Um, there's a good road that leads uh, through the property. Um, it's kind of a, a partially sealed road, um, and it leads to a geothermal hydro plant that um, is set up um, on the property. It's just on the edge of the claims. Um, I think the plant went in to production maybe around 2010. So it produces about 15 megawatts of power and feeds into the grid. So, you know, a lot of people talk about having power nearby or they can get power in and that sort of thing. Well, we have power on site, which is kind of interesting. Excellent. We just chatted earlier this month, so I won't belabor the point too much, but uh, Willow and Ajax, anything to add there? Well, things are moving forward. I mean, we're, we're still, uh, we're still trying to advance Willow um, in sort of a tough copper market at the moment. Um, we think that's going to improve, but um, at the moment it's, it, it is tough slogging with copper stories. Ajax is coming along. Um, our partners still make, continue to make progress. Um, engaging some of the local stakeholders, particularly First Nations groups. Um, that's sort of the key for the project is to get uh, to get people back on site. Um, it seems to have been, uh, you know, the project's kind of been revitalized lately, and we're, we're happy with what our partners are doing to date. Excellent. And again, not to belabor the point too much, but Willow. Willow, we're still advancing it. Um, we just, you know, the next steps on Willow is basically to do some more drilling. Um, we, um, the last drilling we did, we, we discovered an intrusive, which is the source of all the porphyry coppers in the camp. And, <coughs> and the interesting thing is that, um, you know, you, you need that particular intrusive to have a porphyry, uh, a porphyry deposit in the Arrington camp. Um, the flip side of that is there's no known instances of that rock type that don't have a known porphyry attached to it. So this is kind of a brand new discovery. Um, we had some problems with the drilling, uh, the drilling company that we used last time. We really only got one drill hole into it. So it remains pretty much untested, but we, we have a large two by two kilometer uh, anomaly there marked by, you know, favorable geochemistry, favorable geophysics. And uh, next steps are to get in and do a decent sized drilling program on that project. So we, you know, we still like it a lot. We're still uh, looking forward to getting back and doing some more testing. Like many companies looking for a better environment to do that in, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, in the meantime, it looks like we've got a bit of a gold market. Um, you know, we'll we'll use our talents uh, elsewhere for for a little bit of time on the Jersey Valley, but we certainly haven't forgotten Willow. Excellent, Paul. Thank you so much for the thorough update. I appreciate it, and I get the feeling we'll be chatting soon. I see, I see you busy behind the scenes. That usually uh, it tends to lead into. Um, additional projects. I know you're still looking. I know the Rolodex is is, is quite heavy there. So uh, fingers crossed we get a better market in 2020, which I anticipate. Well, I do too. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. We're, we, we have been actively looking at, um, you know, new gold projects for probably four to six months at the, at the moment. Uh, we've looked at a bunch of things. We've um, we sort of settled on Jersey Valley, but we're still, we still have our eye on a, a number of other possibilities. So they're, there could be more news on that front to come. It's a good time to bring in projects. It's a tough market out there. Absolutely. The best time to do it is when uh, other people are not looking or when the market is not paying paying attention. But I think that the market, you know, the market took off a few months ago, settled back a little bit. Um, it's, you know, it's still a good time to pick up projects and I think it's going to take off again. Excellent. Paul, thanks again. Thank you, uh, Jardo, and uh, you have a good day. You as well.